Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel if you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, we are back to react to Dr. Zucker Nike this time with his video An Atheist vs. Dr. Zucker Nike worth watching. The video is a bit older, therefore the quality is not as crisp. Nevertheless, I can't wait to see the human lexicon in action again. Dr. Zucker Nike, the man with an answer to everything. Let's have a look. Now, I believe that we have some questions from the brother's mic on the left-hand side. Go ahead. Hello, Dr. Zucker Nike. My name is Harris. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona in the United States. I'm an entrepreneur and a marketing manager. Two of my friends in America have converted uh, watching YouTube videos of you. Converted. Uh, one of them a Christian, one of them an atheist. One of my friends... Uh, he seems to me like he's putting on an accent. Um, Doesn't seem American to me. How to deal with an atheist DVD of yours, which I did watch. Um, but that didn't answer my question. And I've asked this question to a lot of people with no satisfactory answers, a lot of intelligent people. Of all the scholars that I've ever watched on YouTube, in my opinion, you are the most rational, logical, easy to understand kind of scholar that I've ever come across in my life. And easy to understand for sure. It's really important that this question is answered because I've never had a satisfactory answer for this question. Uh, my question is like a coin with two sides. The first side of it is this, and this is the question. I'm somewhere between an atheist and agnostic, I'm not sure where. Um, Which would make more sense. The agnostic position at least admits that they do not know. Fair enough. The atheist position, on the other hand, is anti-theism, so therefore makes an absolute statement about God. At the same time will claim that morals are relative, that truth is relative, that there is no absolute truth. But you're making an absolute truth claim, but saying that there is no God. How do you explain this, atheists? God has created this entire universe. And Universe. the Quran speaks a lot about Definitely not American. it's taken so many days and mountains and this and that and life is going to be a test and whatnot. My question is, way before God decided to create this entire universe, before he decided to put human beings, before he decided to send Prophet Muhammad or Adam and Eve, way before he even planned about doing any of this, he knew the end result of it. He knows in the end, he will be disappointed by certain people and he will throw them in hellfire. He knows they will be burning. He knows they'll be tortured and that is when they'll be repenting for what they've done. Way before... Yeah, it's a limited belief yet again because there is no before within God. So God created and it was. That's basically what it is. We here in our temporary time frame, in our illusion of meta space time, we see it a certain way. We see that there is a beginning and an end, but there is no beginning or end with God and therefore God created. There was no yesterday, there was no past, there was no future. God simply created. He created the entire universe he knows the outcome is gonna be bad it may be good for certain people who are in heaven but he knows that he can save those people but you don't even have a reference to good and bad why is it bad to go to hell as an atheist yet again you have no universal morals so therefore why would you claim that going to hell is bad out of your relativistic worldview it is equal there is absolutely no differentiation it is equally good equally right equally wrong it doesn't matter it's just relative going to heaven or hell shouldn't even concern you from being in hell way before he even decided decided to go ahead with the creation, yet he decides to go ahead with it, with all his godly logic. Why would he... And on top of that, he's playing God right now by believing he knows the outcome. You don't even know the end of the story, only God knows. So why do you assume that it ends in some sort of tragic? I want to do that. The question, if I can just put it in this manner, how can God be so sadistic that he would actually go ahead with a plan which he knows is going to end up in that manner? That's the first side of the coin. The second side of the coin is, 
for some reason if what is sadistic are we talking about suffering if so why is suffering bad out of the atheistic worldview there is absolutely no explanation why suffering would be bad even if you want to bind it to biological suffering you say oh it hurts and therefore it is bad even though that wouldn't equate it at all then you cannot continue and speak about the metaphysical suffering that you would endure in hell first and foremost you don't believe in hell but nevertheless in hell you would leave your physical body body behind you would have a different type of body there would be a totally different type of suffering yet again why would you even discuss this i believe that okay god is all almighty and he understands everything is great god is great why is god insisting in the quran that look at the mountains look at the protons the electrons this and that everything is so synchronized how amazing i am why is he forcing us to find his creation amazing when it is a piece of cake for god i mean he just had to say kun and it was done. Then why is it a big deal if God has made this entire universe which is so amazing? Because for God it's nothing. So yeah, isn't that amazing? So for God, it's absolutely nothing. For him, it's really no big deal to create this entire universe, multiple universe, if he wants to. It's no big deal to him. But to you, it is. And the Quran addresses you, of course, and shows you the beauty within this world. It is for you. Not be really amazed Enjoy. at his creation. He can do much more than this. So I do not understand why he wants us to respect what he's done or find it amazing what he has done. Again, for the sole reason that it is amazing. The it's asked for a you. Very good question. Gratitude. And a very intellectual. But as an atheist, you don't need to show gratitude, so it's fine. Good question. It's a very good question. Is it? And yes, yeah, seen some of my tapes on YouTube, even of atheism, and this question that is troubling him, he hasn't got the answer to. The brother asked the question that Almighty God knows everything before He created the heaven and the earth, before He created human being, before Prophet Muhammad came here. Peace be upon him. He knew everything. If he knew that some will go to heaven, majority will go to hell, so why did he create the human being? Isn't it sadistic? Is the basic question, correct? Right. Second question will come to it later on. Brother, told you that majority will go to hell. Well, even if one person is going, it doesn't make any sense. Even what? if one person goes to he could avoid hell, that. Hell, he could have avoided that. I mean, he could avoid being disappointed. Yeah, again, as a father, I could avoid my son crying about candy. I should give him candy all the time. Let's not give him any healthy food. Let's just give my kid candy and ice cream all day long because I could avoid that child crying. That would be the right decision, according to the atheist. It's all about what feels good. That is the atheist logic. As long as it feels good, it must be right, even though there is no right and wrong absolutely ridiculous why is it wrong for god to send people to hell explain that out of an atheistic worldview why of course i'll reply the brother said even if one person goes to hell <laughs> it is as though god would be disappointed god doesn't get disappointed ever now coming to your question i started a school i started a school and you may have heard Islamic International School. If a teacher takes an examination, if she's just, while she is giving the examination, she writes in the maths paper, two plus two is equal to how much? The student in front of her or him, the teacher, writes five. She can very well tell the student, change five to four. Would it be just on the teacher during the test and examination to correct a student who's writing a wrong answer. Right, but if she has an option that the student doesn't need to do any of that and still no, just No, 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 I'm asking a simple question. I'm asking you a simple Right, question. but if she would have the option, if she would have the option, so if she would have the option to not put the student through the test, so the student doesn't learn anything. That is the atheist logic, right? Let's not create a world with hardship. This is why atheism births many degenerate movements, be it feminism, be it veganism even. If you look at vegans, they do not want to accept the world for what it is. 
they do not believe in God, but they think it's unjust that we are eating animals. And moreover, they think it's unjust that any animal eats animals. So ultimately, they want to transform this world into a herbivorous planet where the lion eats grass. It's absolutely ridiculous, but moreover, it is of course denying reality as the baseline because they have the perception that this reality is wrong. This reality is unjust. But based on what? If you are a Darwinist, if you believe in the theory of evolution, fantastic, go stick with it. Because then you would have to accept that it is survival of the fittest and everything feeds on each other. And that would be the perfect justice because it's an ecosystem that functions. That's it. Period. And this is what I'm saying as an atheist here. Why would you be upset about those consequences? First and foremost, you don't even believe in them. Secondly, why do you judge the suffering around you as something bad? If there is no eternal standard of goodness, there is no standard of evil. You don't have God and the devil. For you, everything is relative. And therefore, the suffering is fantastic as well. If you feel like killing somebody tomorrow, you can go out and do it because you have have no moral baseline question the teacher has given the question paper right. all the students were informed about it you're right for that particular situation for that fine. particular situation the teacher can tell dear student change five to four what will the other students think about unjust but Correct. god can be just at the same time he can create a complete completely different condition he doesn't have to go ahead with that situation he's not bound by any situation Saying, exactly, let's create Disneyland for the atheists. Almighty God can create something which is perfect and will not make mistake, correct? That right. God has already done, he created the angels. God right. created the angels, the angel never go against any commandment of God. But human being is a better creation than angel. The angels have got no free will of their own. Right. If you have heard my tapes, if you have not heard, I'll tell you now. The angels are a creation of Almighty God, but not the best creation. Almighty God created the human beings. The human beings have a free will to go against God or to follow God. If it's you have chosen complex. to be a human being, if you disobey his commandments, you go to hell. If you obey his commandments, you are superior than the angel. Because the angel doesn't have a free will of his own. Then he follows God. It's nothing great. The human beings are the better creation of Almighty God. Almighty God has given a free will. That's a different question that Almighty God knows. Because he has ilme gab, he has knowledge of the future, he is more superior. So he has created such a creation which has a free will. The fault is of human being, not God. No, but God has created us with that fault and he knows he not can avoid fault, that. Not fault, it's not fault brother, it is free will. Why is he giving us a free people when he knows? He it's like saying, hey man, why did you open up that gym? In that gym, there are certain machines and barbells that weigh way too much for me. They are way too heavy to move. Why did you create it that way, man? Couldn't you just create yoga mats and we wouldn't need any dumbbells? It would be so much easier, bro. This is the atheist logic. Do you understand this? Why is there challenge? Why is there adversity? They're essentially not accepting the test for what it is. He's going to eventually put That's it. these many people in hell. Why is it doing something? That is a different creation. Like, would you want to create something which can think on its own? Or would Why you want would to... someone so compassionate be scanned? Yeah, brother, that's what I tell you. Time. What you want, God has already created an angel. I'm asking you, which is better? An angel following Almighty God or a human being following Almighty God? Which is better? For me, absolutely, if I get a second chance, I would want to be an angel. Why would I risk second going Second chance, hell? correct. That's why Almighty God says in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 172, was Almighty for this. God bought all the human beings from the loin of Adam and asked them, is there one God? All agreed. Almighty God says in Surah Hashar, chapter 59, verse number 21, if Almighty God revealed the Quran on the mountain, the mountain would shut down. Almighty God says in Surah Azab chapter 33, verse number 72, it okay. is the human beings who were fools who said we want to be human beings. You and I, you and I were fools. Now you cannot backtrack. Once you said you want to appear for the test, once you read the test paper. Nobody asked me. 
that they that yeah, that's what you think no. that's actually very interesting because in the new age movement there is the same perception that we chose this human experience as souls as beings we chose this human experience now we are here out of the quranic context now we're here for the test the new age further claims that we forgot that we made that choice now we are here we are born as a baby and we forget what was prior to this and i would think that islam agrees with this because we cannot remember our previous state as souls oh brother quran says every human being was asked and then it is washed mm. off there you go this memory ah, is washed see? off if yes. the memory is away the test almighty god says in the quran do you want to be a human being if you become a human being you can become superior to an angel or can get inferior if you don't want to become a human being just pass even for argument that makes absolute sense to use modern day terminology for this yet again it is as if you would put on a vr goggle you immerse yourself into a virtual reality you're playing a game ideally you want to forget that you're playing that game so it appears even more real to you and this test wouldn't be a real test if it wouldn't appear real to us even though the quran states of course that this life is nothing but the enjoyment of delusion so therefore it states that this world is a delusion ultimately it is not real but nevertheless the test itself appears to be real for it to appear to be real you would have to forget where you came from let me complete. That please let me complete that's awesome you ask the question all right go if ahead, you sir. interject how will answer sure go ahead so almighty god asked the human beings and the quran says we human beings were fools you and i both were fools who opted for the test now, once you undergo a test, if you follow the commandment after free will, you be superior to an angel. If you disobey Allah, you become inferior to an angel. We wanted to pass with distinction, you and I. You and I. You told, I don't remember. Of course you will not remember. And even I don't remember. But I believe in the Quran. On the day of judgment, Almighty God says, not a single human being will object to the justice of Allah. Right. That will come to know on the day of judgment. Only thing we'll say, please give us one more chance. Almighty God will say it's too late. Because if he wants to give you a new chance, then I'll have to come back in the world again. Again, everyone. So those who failed, he can't get only the failures. So the Quran says no one will ever object on the justice of Allah. They will request Allah give us one more chance. Almighty God will say too late. Almighty God <laughs> gives us chances in this world itself. You make a mistake, Allah gives you a chance to repent. You repent. Allah forgives you. Again, you make a mistake. All the, once you die, it's only one. So as far as the first question is concerned, why did God create? Because it's a better creation. Any logical person, including you, has to agree that a person who has the free will is a better creation than a person who has no free will. Only your question you don't remember. It's a more complex creation, for sure. Remember, it's perfectly right. When you die. It depends if you want to judge this as better. The Orthodox Church Fathers, for example, they said that ideally they wouldn't like to have a free will because the free will always brings them away from God. So in their worldview, it would be superior to not even have a free will. I personally say it is more complex and by the definition, yes, it is better because you actually have the choice. When you're resurrected, that time you and I will meet. Then you will say, I remember. Even I don't remember now. But I have faith in the Quran that Quran cannot be wrong because scientifically, if you heard my lecture, 80% of the Quran is 100% matching with science. 20% is ambiguous, neither right, neither wrong. So my logic says when 80% is 100% correct and not even 0.1% of the 20% is wrong. So my logic says even this 20% would be right. I'm a scientific person. I'm a logical person. So I believe in the statement of the Quran that we chose if you wouldn't have chosen, you could have questioned God. Why did you make me a human being? Then right. God would have been at fault. But God says in the Quran, he asked the mountains for afraid. Everything else for afraid. We human beings opted for this. But do you so, remember being asked? I don't remember being asked. He but just said no, man. Heard my answer. Even I don't remember. But if you remember the wow. very the test, imagine if a teacher teaches you something. Teacher teaches you something, teacher gives you the book. The teacher has to take away the book for the test. If the teacher says, okay, take the book and answer, where is the test? Okay, but what? 
After the exam, this is over. You can go home and check or not. But even before the brother, exam began, God brother, knows. Brother, the brother, brother, listen to. He explains it simple. I like it. After the exam, this is over. Can you go and check home or not in the textbook? Absolutely. <laughs> but during the examination, can you check? No. So now the examination is going on, brother. Once it's over, you can check. <laughs> If you tell teacher, teacher, I want to see the textbook, I don't remember. No. During the examination, you cannot refer to the textbook, it will be called cheating. Correct? So once the examination is over, if you don't remember, you tell God, what is this illogical? But Quran says not a single human being will object to the justice. Let the test go over. So today, I being a scientific person, I being a logical person, based on my knowledge of science, based on my logic, when I read the other scriptures, and when I read the Quran, I find Quran is the only book, only religious scripture on the face of the earth which passes this test. So therefore, I being a scientific person, being a logical person, agree, okay, fine. This statement of the Quran also has to be right. I don't remember, that is the test. If I remember, where is the test? So that answers the first part of the question. First part, that saying that God was sadist. God is not sadist. For example, I start a medical college. I want the school students to go to medical. How many students who go to school enter the medical college? Just roughly, can you guess? Few, surely less than 5%. Less than maybe 1%. So, why did you make a college where only one person can enter? Fine. It is for selected few. So, same way God made heaven, Jannah, Jannat Firdos. Everyone cannot go to Jannat Firdos. Why not? It's like a purifying ground. Sorry? Why not? Why can't every. Why can't every. Why do you want to go to heaven? You're an atheist. Everyone go to medical college. Because it's human capacity. If, if humans yes. were capable of being able to Correct. put everyone to medical college, they would. That's the way we are made. The same way, everyone cannot become a doctor. Only those who have the capacity. Exactly. Same way, everyone cannot go to Janati Firdos, the high levels of paradise. We have to strive. God has given you capacity. If you don't follow his guidance, you cannot. If you follow his guidance, to go to Jannah is very easy. <laughs> if you're intelligent, it's very easy. If you're intelligent. And if you're truthful to yourself. But if you're not truthful to yourself... The atheist basically makes the claim, what if you're not intelligent enough? So therefore, you can't even help it to be an atheist or to be something else than a Muslim. What then? Why is it so unjust from the get-go? But ultimately, yet again, I have to repeat, there is no injustice within the atheist world. First and foremost, there is no heaven and hell in the atheist worldview. Moreover, there is no objective standard of right and wrong. And because because there is none, heaven or hell is not better or worse. For you, it is all the same. Even a non-intelligent man can go to Jannah. Only thing you should be truthful. God has given you different options how to follow him. Some people think they are smart. I tell them they are extra smart. If they were smart, they would see it is crystal clear in black and white that this is the word of God. You have to follow it. That's the reason Francis Bacon said, little knowledge of science makes you an atheist, in-depth knowledge of science makes you a believer in God. So I wouldn't say God is sadist. I said we were fools who opted to undergo the test. Not God. God gave you an option. What do you want to be? We chose. So we are responsible, not God. God is not a sadist. We are fools. That's what the Quran says. On the day of judgment, you'll come to know, inshallah, you and I both. Inshallah, if I go to Jannah, inshallah, inshallah, I'll pray to God, I'll thank God. You know, I was a good person, I choose to be a human being. If you pass that, if you fail, then we will curse our own self. Hope that answers the question. The second part? Sorry, what is the second part? <laughs> that even if I believe how almighty he is, how knowledgeable he is, why is he so bent on convincing us? Look at the mountains, look at the electrons, look at the That's protons. Right. The second part of the question... I don't get the question. That why do As said previously, why not? If he created something that's amazing to you, an atheist would agree, I assume, that mountains and the ocean and the universe is amazing. Why not acknowledge it? Does Almighty God give references of the mountain that he's created this? For him, it is peanuts. 
So why is he talking? You know why is he saying? He is saying these peanut things, mountain, they would shudder. You human being was superior. Why don't you understand? Quran says in Surah Hashar chapter 59 verse number 21, had the Quran been revealed on the mountain, the mountain would have fallen down to utter ruin. But to us human beings, it makes no difference. He's giving these examples to show that these things which are so powerful, the mountains, etc., which he has created, would have submitted the will. Why don't you human beings do? He's trying to give an example that we are fools. He's not trying to praise himself. And whenever he asks us to praise him, or when he says, for this Allah Akbar, God is the greatest. Do you think it will change Allah? No. Whether you say a thousand times Allah Akbar or a million times, he cannot become greater. He's already the greatest. Yes. The reason we say these things is because it is our human mentality, our human nature that we follow the people who are famous, we follow the people who we praise. For example, aside from that, it is not for God, as he said correctly, God is already complete, God is already perfect, there is no lack within God. The praise towards God is only to put yourself back into place, so you understand your place. I spoke about this previously. When you look at martial arts, for example, I love martial arts because it humbles you, it brings your ego down, and it puts you into place. When you go to Jitsu, for example, you submit a bunch of guys and then some guys submit you so you are being put back into place back where you belong this is extremely important to the human mind otherwise you think you are the greatest and you're never the greatest god is the greatest you can experience similar things when you go out in nature and you will experience the jungles the mountains the ocean you are nothing you're just a speck of dust in comparison to the power of nature that has been created by god which is eternally powerful and therefore saying Allahu Akbar in this case God is greater is only for your own benefit your mother has a heart to attack. humble you there is unknown person on the street who gives you the treatment and you heard that the best heart specialist in the world is Dr. X now will you follow Dr. X's advice or the person on the street who you don't know Dr. X why because Dr. X is famous people know him he's the best in the world so the reason in our salah in our life, we say Allah Akbar, Allah is the greatest, Allah is the most wise, Allah is the most intelligent. Why? If we say that it doesn't benefit Allah, it benefits us. That if we praise Him, we follow Him. If we follow, we go to Jannah. To Allah, it makes no difference. Therefore, Allah says, will you not then believe? Will you not then understand? That means the Quran is revealed to the people for understanding. So he's giving this example not to make himself great. He's already the greatest. Whether you say a million times Allah is the greatest, it will not make a difference to Allah. He's telling it to you. Allah says in the Quran, Allah does not require you, you require him. So when we praise him, it is human psychology. That the person Allah's existence is not based on anything. He is self-sustainable. You, on the other hand, when you're born, you need your mother's breast to be sustained. Then you're feeding on your surroundings, on the flora and the fauna, if you will. You are in direct need of everything around you. And moreover, all your surroundings are based upon the pre-existence of God. God, on the other hand, doesn't have that. Praise person you talk great about, you tend to follow his advice. By following his advice, it will benefit you, it will not benefit him. He is already the greatest, he is already the merciful. So these are rules and regulations laid down. He is our creator, he knows our mindset. So the reason he speaks about this then, ah, such a best. Like, you are a student of science, correct? I am also a student of science. The moment I come to know, Allah mentioned these scientific facts which we came to know today, 50 years back, it increases my faith in Allah. Allah says in Surah Fusila chapter 41 verse 53, Sanuri mayatina fil afaqi wa fi anfusim hatta yatabayna anna ulaq. Soon we shall show them our signs in the furthest regions of the horizons and into their soul until it is clear to them that this is the truth. So Allah is giving these examples so that it benefits us. For Him, it makes no difference. It is benefiting us, so He is giving us a chance to follow Him so that we can go to heaven. Hope that answers the question, brother.
I recognize his power and I understand he's amazing and all that that he's done. But then you're not an atheist. If you recognize his power, you recognize he's amazing, then you're definitely not an atheist, man. You're a deist to say the very least. Am I expected to be amazed at his achievements at creating this universe? Because for me, for him, it's like a one second job. Correct. Right. So for him. Oh man, this guy is so annoying. Yet again, it is for your own benefit, bro. If you don't want to be amazed at anything, then don't be. Be miserable. Sit at home and cry under your pillow. But if you want to accept this gift of life, then accept it and see that it's amazing. One second wow, job. Man. When he Poor. tells you not to have alcohol, if I you have alcohol, sure. But am I expected to be amazed but. at his creation? No, see, the thing is that, that he's not there to prove himself better. If you believe that for him it is peanuts, so will a person lie? No. So if he says don't have alcohol, you will not question him. No. Don't have pork, you will not question him. Yeah, but I'm not amazed at his creation because for him it's nothing. Compared to us, it's amazing. Yeah, what if you're not think? amazed at his creation because it's nothing for him, man. Wow, what kind of statement is that? I've seen UFC fights, other sporting events where it seems to be absolutely nothing for the athlete, but it is so great for us to watch that event. That's your answer, man. That it is easy for him makes the whole thing even more amazing. Right. Because it's hard but for you, impossible for you. A person who can create the universe, when he tells me not to have alcohol, I immediately follow. Sure, Amaz I don't mind following him, but do I have to be amazed at his creation? As his don't be. Around? Just don't be. See, as you asked me the question, should I be amazed at the creation? Right. I would say, if I believe human being is a better creation, then yes, I'm amazed. And then I say, Alhamdulillah, he has made me better than that. So if I'm amazed, he made the mountains, he made the stars, he made the sun. Ah, but he made Zakir Naik also. <laughs> he made a human being and we are the best of creation so he gives these examples so that we realize what benefit he has given to us all the favors he has given to us talking about the science talking about the protons talking about the mountains finally he says human beings are the best creation so in comparison we have to agree that our creator has created this human body, the molecules, the DNA, the complex thing, which can never come by chance. So in this way, we are amazed at the creation of the human being. And then we submit to him. If you are not amazed, only by being amazed, we submit that he is our creator, he is worth worshipping. No one else can do that. This is so that that's actually a very crucial part because that's what you see with atheists. He's only looking for critique at the creation, not coming from an objective moral standard. He simply cannot accept the creation as is. And because he cannot accept his surrounding as is, he cannot accept God and therefore he cannot submit to God. We worship him and we pass the test and we go to paradise. Hope that answers the question. If Bill Gates gives me a hundred dollars, wow. should I be amazed that he has given me that money? Uh, I believe that the question has been answered and unfortunately we are very constricted for time. You are welcome to come back tomorrow, inshallah. As with all of the brothers and sisters, we have come- And if he gives you a hundred dollars, yes, you should be grateful. End of tonight's session. Wow, so basic. I just give this last, is that if Bill Gates gives you a hundred dollars- Should I be amazed? Will you get amazed? Brother, the question is, why should Bill Gates give you hundred dollars? <laughs> if you tell me a Tom, Dick and Harry gives you hundred dollars, nothing to be amazed. Bill Gates gave me hundred dollars. It's something that he gave you. Why did he give you one and somebody else? Why? The question is, why did he give you is the question. Okay. If some Tom, Dick and Harry gives you if a man on the street gave you hundred dollars, Bill Gates. <laughs> got it. You got That's it, no? Answer. Got it. I got that. So now you're convinced, the, huh? Yes, absolutely. That is the answer. So inshallah, I hope that we'll come closer to Islam. So I should not be amazed at the fact that he's given me the money. I should be amazed it's him who's given the money. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so it was worth the time extending. Alhamdulillah. <laughs>
All right, and this is it for today's video. Hilarious video to watch. I find that Zucker and Nike really handled it well. However, I personally would have given the atheist different answers as I did throughout the video. I would question his belief first and foremost. What is your moral standard? Why do you find this morally incomprehensible for yourself? Why is this morally wrong? What is morals? Where do morals come from if you're not grounding them into something? And further, when he asked if he should be amazed, I would tell him, no, you don't have to be amazed. Be simply depressed, suffer. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this dialogue. If you like the video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. We are on the road to 100k subscribers. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. If you want to further support this channel, you can do so via Patreon, for example. All the links are in the description box below low. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.